This is a video tutorial for the new Dentmill 2011 R3. So one of the new features for Dentmill 2011 R3 is that you can batch load both uh, STL files and margin lines into the system. So it changes our workflow a little bit if you haven't been uh, grouping all of your STLs and margin lines together in a folder. But we'd recommend that you do this now because it'll save you, try save you time when you load them into the system. For example, most systems, like the 3Shape and Dental Wings, will put all of your STL files into a folder, normally the manufacturing directory. In this case, I'm going to use this folder called Test Crowns that has all of my jobs in it, like the manufacturing directory from the 3Shape. I'll then create a new folder here on my desktop in this case. I'll call it 494 for the jobs that I want to mill right now. And so I'll take both the STL and PTS files, which are the STL and margin lines, for a few different units, and I'll place them all together in this folder. You can see I can do this much faster than loading them individually into Dentno. Okay, so there's four units. That should be enough. Once I've done that, I'll start my Dentno process just like normal. So first, I'll start a new job by selecting our machine. And whether you have a dent mill 1, 2, or 3, you'll want to select it from the list, and then hit OK. The next part of the process is to select the size stock that you need for this, these particular units. In this case, we'll select a 14 millimeter with a shrink rate of 1.2455, zirconia in this case. If I wanted to use a uh, part use piece of stock, I'd get it from the list here. And you can see that it will include the holes that we made in the unit earlier. But I'm going to go back and say, no, I want a new one at eh, 1.2455. This is the number that is on the zirconia disk. Then we hit OK. Now all of the units that we import into the stock will be increased in size by that 1.2455 shrink rate. So I'll hit load new part. And I'm going to go to my desktop and find the folder with all of my work in it, in this case 494. And I can lasso these all together and hit open. You can see that it's going to match the corresponding margin lines to each of the units, and when I hit OK, it will import them all into our stock. Matching the margin lines with the STL files and starting to put the pins on each of the individual units. Now you can see that all of our units have been placed in the block and nested. Now I want you to look at the block from the side by pushing one of these icons to make sure that all of your teeth fit inside the block. We don't want to try and machine something that's sticking outside or it's not going to come out, obviously. Then if I look at my units from above, I can see that these three units have three support pins like I want them to, and they'll be nice and safe in machining, while this one only has two, so I need to go in and fix it. Click the activate buttons until you find the unit. It'll go yellow when you've selected the correct one. And if I go to my active part setup, I can go to the support setup support pins. And if I want another support pin here, I just left click in that zone. If I want to modify an existing support pin, I click these arrows until the one I want to modify goes green. In this case, I'll delete it and we'll place another support pin here. If I want to rotate a support pin, I can click the rotate button, move it back and forth. Just make sure you hit OK after you've got the support pin in the position you'd like. Once we have our pins where we'd like them to be, we can hit OK. And now we can see we have three pins in the main overview. Next, I'm going to move to the machining tab and click Run Cam Manager. 
this is our opportunity to nest these parts a little bit closer and save a little bit of money for later. I can rotate this unit and place it closer to the other one. The, the yellow part of the overview is the coping or crown, and the white portion is the area where the tool is going to go, so I can overlap these areas and effectively save three millimeters of material. I'm just going to do the same here. When I click, you can see I get these corners around it. If I go over them, I'll be rotating my part. If I have this, I can move it back and forth, all with left click. So I'm going to do the same basic process here. I'm going to take these and move them more close. And I want to make sure that I'm not sticking out of my block. If I do this, I'll be milling into aluminum. And if I leave this here, the support pin won't do me any good because it's just sticking off into the air. So I want to make sure that I rotate. So I have a little bit of safe zone right here and still have my support pin sticking into existing material. If I want to add engraving to these units, I'll click the engraving tab, select a unit, and hit add. This is the file name from the three shape or dental wings. In this case, if I want to keep A3, I'll just delete the rest of it. And I want to put this on a flat part of the tooth. That way it'll be the easiest to read. It's a projection onto the tooth. So we'll do another one here, B2. so that we can show some engraving. It'll give me a warning saying that I have some overlap here. I want to make sure one last time that I'm not sticking outside of the disc and that these support pins are stuck into the material, not hanging off into the air. Okay. Now I want to save my project before I calculate. It's Windows, so if you were going to crash, we'd want to be able to open it up right with all of our setup done before we calculated. So I'm going to give it a name. In this case, it was my 49 space 4, the fourth job I'm going to mill on today, 49. Now to calculate code for machining, I'm going to click Calculate Toolpaths in the Machining tab. I'm going to select the material that I'm going to use in the machine, so PMMA, Wax, or Zirconia. Zirconi in this case. I'm going to give it the same name as above, my 49-4, 49 space 4. And this will be the program that will actually run the machine. This up here is the setup file that we use to generate the program. I want to have them with the same name so that if my program has a problem, I can go back to my setup file and figure out what the problem was. Once I click OK, Dentmill will calculate the cutter path that will run the machine. It'll take between 45 seconds and a minute for each unit, so it might be a good time to go do some more scanning or designing. I'm going to pause the uh, calculate, pause the recording, so we don't have to watch this. Once the calculation is finished, you'll see this little summary right here saying that it's saved the file 494 that we're going to use to run the machine. You can hit OK. Now I want you to look at the cutter path to make sure that we've calculated something. You'll see here everything that, uh, that's basically going to command your machine to cut these teeth. I don't expect you to understand everything about these right off the bat, but we can run the simulation to show what the machine is going to do. I'm going to zoom out a little bit because it's basically uh, your graphics card is going to slow this down. So if we zoom it out, it'll go faster. If I hit Show View Mill, Render View, Simulate All, we're basically going to run a simulation of uh, what the machine is going gonna, is gonna to do. If this ends up looking like uh, four finished copings or crowns, then we're good to go. But if you get any other machining that looks strange to you, please call one of our guys and have them get online with you, and we'll and we got to look at it before you run it. If you were to have it finished and it still looked like this, where it looks like uh, different levels on the inside of the coping, something's also gone wrong in calculation. This can either be the uh, the margin line wasn't imported properly, or there was a problem with the initial STL, which we used to get a lot with uh, files coming off the interoral scanners like the like the Itero or the Lava. What we're looking for here is that it just basically looks like four good finished crowns and when we're when we're done it looks like that'll be the case. Okay, so those look great. It looks like it's just finishing on the occlusion right now. So I'm going to say OK. Excellent. 
Now, it's already saved for the program that's going to run the machine, but I want to save two more things. First, I just want to go back and hit File Save so that if I reopen this project, I'll have all of the cutter path that we just calculated saved with the setup that I did before. Then, I'm going to want to save the stock. We obviously didn't, uh, we didn't fill up this entire disk, and we're going to be able to want to use the rest of it later. So we want to give this disk a name. So I'm going to say that it's HT for high translucency, 14 millimeter, number 2. And I want to take a Sharpie and write this on the side of the disk so that I can uh, match this up when I come to get it later. Hit OK. Now I'm, ba now I'm basically ready to load this into the, uh, load this into the machine. Uh, normally you do it, normally you do this in front of the machine, but I've uh, got the controls up so that we can look at them here. Okay, so first we've got to transfer it over to the machine. And we use this program FileZilla to move the uh, to move the program over. And so we're gonna refresh here and we can see that here is everything on our PC that I'm sitting in front of. This this side on the left. Over on the right are all the programs that are on our machine. Right here, if I want to move one over, we just finished 494. I can just come grab it, drag it over, and it'll go through your network, and you can see that it's loading it onto your CNC machine. So you may have to hit refresh, and you'll see that it is already there at 494. Now, I would need to go over to the machine, take the stock that I'm going to machine, the zirconia, put it in, and tighten it down. And then I can hit my load program. And in this case, I'm going to refresh it by going from IP to Compact Flash. It's going to take a little bit because I have to look through my network to make this happen. So, 494, select. I want to start at the beginning, hit OK. And now, as soon as I hit cycle start, this machine is ready to go. All right, and that should do it for Dent Mill 2011 R3.